To be honest with you, I'm glad he got the stoppage. I'm glad it's over. Um, we're real time, so all this is going on live right now in the United States. It is 4.27 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, June 26, 2015. One minute. Okay, um, very closely that one, it did absolutely the right Ivica, yeah, he did. Bakurin, Croatian fighter, still giving him a, a hard time. Let's wait till we hear from uh, Tony Bellew. Right now, as I said, it is uh, still 4.27 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, June 26, 2015. I am Tishtrew Controversy. This is Tishtrew Controversy Live. And of course, as I said, um, if you don't know, this American is a big Tony Bellew fan. Tony Bellew, um, natural cruiserweight fighter, former 175-pound contender. American fans may know him because he was actually on HBO um, was he Adonis Stevenson's last HBO fight where he was stopped? Um, he was fighting for that uh, WBC uh, title. Long story short, he stopped the fighter in the tenth round by the name of Aveka Bakurin of Croatia. Late step in. Aveka Bakurin. The winner from Liverpool, Tony Bar. Tony Bellew against the big, tough, and extremely brave late substitute. But he dominated the fight, got the stoppage late on. Most importantly, keeps those high world rankings. Remember, he's number 10 with the WBA, 8 with the IBF, 2 with the WBO. He put those in jeopardy, and if anything had gone wrong tonight, that really would have torn up some plans. But he got there in the end, got the stoppage as well. And you know he talks a good fight, it's always good to hear from him. Okay, yeah, here's the post fight interview, and then we're going to talk about the future. The future for him. Tony, good to see you smiling. Finally, finally, you got the stoppage. That's your so tough, you must have some sore hands. He took heaven Yeah, to be honest, I wasn't looking. But first and foremost, we condolence just go out to Jim Watt and his family for what he's going through right now. Jim, my heart and his soul is with you, my friend. All of us. Yes, from everybody here in this in this place, Sky Sports, the boxing people, everyone. Uh, the display, I'll be totally honest, uh, I wasn't 100%, and everyone knows that, but listen, I, I was I was scared of opening up. I don't know that. Ass, and uh, I thought when it got to the ninth round, I thought, you know what, I'm just going to use speed and open up a tiny little bit now. But uh, come, So why weren't you 100% injuries going in or the seven months out? Listen, no excuses. I, I never had made excuses, but it, it just, it was disastrous for me. They called up. Has worked so so hard at me, and he's improved the game an extra 25% on what it was. I picked my shots better, I relaxed more, my defense has improved. But you can't help getting sick when you're in camp, and you can't stop injuries or prevent them. It's a combat sport, and I'm facing tough things every day in the gym. So you pick up injuries, you get sick. It doesn't help that I've got three mongrels in the house as well. We bring home every single cold and the flu from the school. So, what is he talking about? Then things you've got to get on with it. I'm just happy I got the win. Mr. Bachanen's a tough guy, fought heavyweights, not being stopped by heavyweights, so I'm happy to get the win and rock and roll on. After the inactivity, do you feel ready now for a title shot? Without doubt. Listen, one thing's first of all, Eddie has delivered on every word he said to me. When we first had that meeting in Nando's went a long time ago, he's, uh, he's delivered on every word he said, and, and he's promised me to get me a title shot at this weight, and I believe what he says. On the spot, what is the plan? Is there a title shot in your thing? Tony Berry. Yeah, we had, you know, Hernandez was the original plan at the end of May. He's been busy in Hollywood and, you know, good to see him back. But we want a winner of Hernandez against Ramirez for the RBF title. He can fight any of the cruiserweight world champions, but that's that's definitely the route. And they fight, I think, in July and then uh, October, November. Tony, he has to fight for a world title now. He's done everything else 
and you know, he's ready. It was good to see him back tonight. He nearly didn't fight. You know, he was ill and I spoke to Dave, but you try to put Antonio Bellew out of the fight, it doesn't happen. So it has to be a world title fight next. Good news today for Tony Bellew's big rival, Nathan Cleveley. Tell us about that. Yeah, yeah, Nathan will fight Andre Fonfara um, in October in America. It's a huge fight in America. Obviously, he just beat Julio Cesar Chavez, so I'm sure Tony's over the moon for him. Well done, sir. <laughs> um, it's interesting that since he's ranked number two by the WBO, that he won't be going after Marco Huck. Marco Huck is actually going to be fighting in the United States against, uh, I forgot how to pronounce his uh, first name, Gowaki, for the WBO title on the undercard of uh, Tarver versus Steve Cunningham. And you know, remember, Steve Cunningham fought Marco Huck. This is going to be on uh, PBC on Spike TV. Um, you want to hear what Paul Smith has to say? I do kind of want to take a break, and we got the Caleb Smith fight coming up. This is going to be my first time covering Caleb Smith. Um, so what I'm going to say is this. I like Tony Bellew. I'm a fan, and I cruise away to be perfectly up. To be perfectly honest with you, I think he can be a world champion. He just has to dig deep. Now it's funny that they're going um, after Hernandez, who has had somewhat of a um, lackluster cruise away, non-active enough career, if it makes sense. Maybe they see him as being the 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 weaker of the cruiserweights. For example, I would love to see. Um, um, Tony Bellew versus Arsene for Arsene, or I would love to see uh, Arsene, or I would love to see him versus um, uh, Dennis Lieberdeff. You know, hell, I mean, you got Roy Jones even floating around out there. You know, I'm not, I don't know, I don't know. But if you don't know, Tony Bellew is going to be in the new um, Rocky spinoff movie. You might as well say it's Rocky, Rocky Seven. You know, it's called Creed. Um, he has fought his last fight in November of 2014, and that was against Nathan Cleverly. That was on Sky Sports Box Office, by the way, which is pay-per-view over there in the UK for American fans who don't know. But I need to take a little bit of a break, get ready for the main event. Um, right now, three fights since since leaving the 175-pound division. He's had three fights um, at Cruiserweight. He's been at Cruiserweight before, but I'm talking about at this point in time, it looks like he's going to be staying at Cruiserweight, and being a heavyweight just doesn't seem smart to me, but, um, I mean, moving to heavyweight just doesn't seem smart to me, but now we know that Eddie Hearn is working on a um, um, Juan Pablo Hernandez versus uh, Tony Bellew fight for the IBF Cruiserweight under 100 and under 200 pound title, and I'm thinking to myself, well, you know... You got Marco Huck up. I'll just leave it at that. I'm T Street Controversy. This is T Street Controversy Live. I cover every single major fight live. Um, please subscribe.